You've learned that atoms and molecules are the building blocks of matter. And I'm sure it's no surprise that atoms are comprised of, 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 uh, <laughs> let's begin again. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. You've, <clears throat> you've learned that atoms and molecules are the building blocks of matter. And I'm sure it's no surprise that atoms are also comprised of particles. We call them subatomic particles. And there's a whole host of these. There's a whole area of physics that devotes itself to the study of subatomic particles. We'll be concerned with three, protons, neutrons, and electrons. If this is a model of the atom, you can see why I didn't pursue a career in art. Uh, and here in the center, in the nucleus, we have the protons and neutrons. And they have most of the weight of the atom, by far the majority of the weight. And in this much larger area surrounding the nucleus are spaces that are occupied by the electrons. If this drawing were to scale, and we had a nucleus of this size, the atom would probably be several miles in di diameter, very, very large. Well, you have a table of, of all of the known elements. We call it the periodic chart of the elements. And one of the elements on that table is carbon. It's element number six. The elements, of course, are each given a sequence number. And it turns out that that sequence number is also the number of protons. So carbon has six protons. And those protons each carry a positive charge. Balancing that six positive charge is our six electrons with negative charges. So the sequence number for any element tells us the number of protons and it tells us the number of electrons if the atom is electrically neutral. But it doesn't give us information about the number of neutrons. Neutrons are neutral. and We have to have an additional piece of information if we're to specify the number of neutrons. And here I've given some additional information. Here's the elemental symbol for carbon, a capital C. This lowercase number uh, is called the atomic number. And we know that it's also the sequence number on the periodic chart of the elements, that it's equal to the number of protons, that it's equal to the number of electrons. This uppercase number is called the mass number because it's the sum of the protons and neutrons where most of the mass within the atom resides. So if we were given this information, uh, we've got carbon 12 with the lowercase 6. I know that it has 6 protons, 6 electrons, and 6 neutrons. And this is a skill that we'd like you to have given information like this for an atom to be able to specify these numbers of subatomic particles. It turns out that not all carbons have the same number of neutrons. For example, uh, here are two more atoms of carbon. Uh, this one has a mass number of 13. This one has a mass number of 14. So they have different mass numbers, which means that these three examples of carbon have a different number of neutrons. In this particular one, we have six protons, six electrons. As a matter of fact, all atoms of carbon would have to have that. If it were a different sequence number, a different number of protons, it would be a different element. And the difference between these two numbers is the number of neutrons. So 13 minus 6 tells us that we have 7 neutrons. Over here, the difference between the two, the lowercase number and uppercase number is 8. We have 8 neutrons. And these three examples, carbon 12, 13, and 14, are referred to as isotopes. Isotopes of an element have different number of neutrons or a different mass number. And they all have the same atomic number. Here's another example of isotopes. There are three isotopes 
for hydrogen, just as there are three isotopes for carbon. And uh, if you take a physics class, you might even see a chart of the isotopes. It's a lot more extensive than a chart of the elements. Uh, in this particular case, the lower case number is one, indicating that it's element number one, or hydrogen. The difference between the two numbers, there'd be zero neutrons here, one neutron here, and two neutrons over in this uh, far example. We need to point out one more thing here that's sort of interesting. Uh, when you look at a chart of the elements, you're given two numbers, a sequence number, and then there's a larger number, uh, oftentimes underneath the element, and it's called the atomic weight. Uh, it's an average of the mass numbers in a natural occurring sample. So for example, the average mass number of these three isotopes of hydrogen would be two. But we don't have equal amounts of these in nature. And so when they measure the atomic weight and come up with an average mass number, there's a lot more of this hydrogen one over here. And the atomic weight that's reported is 1.01, .01, atomic mass units, they're called. And uh, the same thing is true of carbon. When they measure the average mass number in a naturally occurring sample of carbon, they come up with this atomic weight, 12.01 .01 atomic mass units. So if, uh, if carbon were all C14, well, this number would have been 14. Or 13, it would have been 13. The fact that it's 12.01, .01 means that carbon-12 is the abundant isotope in nature. Let's look at one more example, chlorine. The atomic weight on the periodic chart of the elements is listed as 35.45. Well, the fact that it's not a whole number tells us that there are probably some isotopes, and we have two isotopes of chlorine, 35 and 37. There must be a lot more of chlorine 35 in nature than chlorine 37. And so the average in the natural sample comes out to be 35.45. So again, manipulating uh, or identifying the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in an isotope is a skill that we'd like you to have.